the reality is, is that today we have five banks, five major international banks that control 50% of all the banking assets in the United States. We have not had a concentration of wealth in any industries like this going back probably to before the Depression. You probably have to go as far back as Mellon when he was, was it Mellon or Carnegie? Who, who was a treasury at the time? Mellon. Mellon. Uh, one of the wealthiest people in the United States, the wealthiest person in the United States back in the early 1900s was appointed treasury secretary. <laughs> you know, it's like having the fox watch the hen house. The reality is, is that we haven't had that kind of concentration of wealth in probably a hundred years. Historically, when you have this kind of concentration of wealth in the United States, we decide that it's time to break these companies up, whether it's AT&T, whether it's uh, the oil companies, whether it was the steel industries. And the reason we do it is it's anti-capitalistic to have such concentration of wealth in such a small group of individuals. And when you do, you don't have competition, you don't have true capitalism, and you don't have wealth formation, and you don't have the destructiveness of capitalism that allows for new companies to evolve. And so to a large extent, we will remain in this crisis until such time that we all wake up and realize that we're better off having 20 or 30 or 40 banks, each competing with one another, as opposed to having five banks that not only control the banking industry and the economy, but they also control, to some extent, the government. And they also control, don't kid yourself, the judiciary. Because this playing field that we're talking about, at least from my perspective, and, and I don't mean to, to contradict the clerk of the court, but from my perspective, it's not a level playing field. 